Our next speaker is Doug Duran. He's a passionate hunter, farmer, land manager, and conservationist. He's owner of Lone Oak Interest LLC, specializing in site and land management consulting and contracting services throughout Wisconsin and the Driftless area. In addition to his consulting <clears throat> and contracting work, Doug manages the Duran family farm near Casanova, Wisconsin, where he's been working and hunting for over 40 years. The farm has been in the Duran family for 115 years and current management includes traditional crop farming, grass-fed beef, timber management for forest health, wildlife habitat and financial goals, as well as a variety of hunting, aesthetic, and recreation objectives. In addition to his individual clients, Doug has worked on a variety of projects with several public and private conservation organizations, including the American Forest Foundation, Aldo Leopold Foundation, Wisconsin DNR and Wisconsin DNR Forestry, My Wisconsin Woods Driftless Forestry Network, NRCS, and FSA. <clears throat> Doug is a frequent contributor to the Meat Eater television show, the Meat Eater podcast, and the Meat Eater Guide to Big Game Hunting. Duran has also been a guest on the Joe Rogan Experience discussing hunting and land ownership issues. He's been featured in various regional and national publications for his work in conservation. Doug lives in Casanova, Wisconsin, near the family farm with his wife, Tricia. Doug Duran. Uh, so yeah, I was asked to uh, come down here and, and, and speak about how it feels to be a landowner in a high prevalence area, um, southwest Wisconsin, the Driftless area. And uh, it's amazing to be here with all these smart people and, and folks that uh, spend their lives thinking about this. So to go through this whole process and listen to you all and talking about, about these various things and then and come up here to, to talk about how it feels to be a landowner who hunts on a property that's been in my family for so long, I'll tell you how it feels. It sucks. Our farm is in southwest Wisconsin, one of those four counties um, that Tammy talked about yesterday. So there we are. Uh, Richland County, northeast Richland County. Um, as you said, the Driftless area, unglaciated area, beautiful country if you've ever been there, and if you haven't, I'd invite you to come. Um, just a few pictures of our farm and what it looks like. To let you know that wild deer herd, 70 plus deer per square mile. Um, our farm and, the, and the, the land that I control for hunting is a little over 500 acres. Our farm is 400. We, have another, we own another 30, cooperation with neighbors and that sort of thing. So um, that's what it looks like. So as I uh, wrote in my lengthy introduction about myself, um, this farm's been in my family for 115 years, and it's really interesting that now, to me at least, that our primary uses used to be, uh, I grew up, it was a dairy farm, you know? I grew up with the farm, not on the farm. Uh, we grew up, I grew up a couple miles away, lived in a house uh, a couple miles away, so in the morning, the difference between me and the other farm kids is I didn't smell like cow manure when I got on the bus. Um, my great-grandfather was a timber man. Um, we were, um, you know, farmers, small farmers. Um, that farm, that 400 acres, um, my father bought from my grandfather for $24,000 the year I, that I was born, uh, and uh, our during my life, we paid that, paid that off. Now there's nothing that we could do on that farm to uh, justify what the cost of that uh, farm would be. It's really folks from, we call them folks from away, who've come in and, and bought land um, and bought these properties for um, you know, other uses, some for, uh, uh, mostly for hunting and recreation. Um, and so it's driven by a completely different uh, issue right now, which is, is, is coming, uh, which is a part of the discussion, frankly, with CWD. So the deer on our farm in the area, as I said, about 70 uh, per square mile. Um, hunting isn't something that we got that, that was our main, uh, has ever been the main purpose for having the farm. If this is our farm, hunting is this little part of it. Something that when I was a kid, you got to do when everything else was done. You know, it was in the fall of the year something that we got to do. We've killed some pretty nice deer. There isn't a deer there, quite honestly, other than it, that big old boy um, there on the far left that I keep putting pictures up of because, you know. Um, 
there isn't a deer there that's, that's older than three and a half years old. And, and that one, quite honestly, the, uh, that one was only a four and a half year old. So we grow big deer pretty quickly up there. Um, we had the uh, luck um, to be a part of the, the when CWD was first uh, discovered, um, we had the luck of, of, of being in the uh, CWD management zone. Um, and, but yet, it was, CWD was like this far removed thing to me. It's down there on the other side of the Wisconsin River, um, something that we were really, uh, you know, you, your radar went up. A lot of things happened there, but um, what really happened uh, to us is that we were already doing some population management. We were doing a little bit of buck management. We kind of had our own little program that we did. Um, but the cool thing for us is, uh, if, when I say us, my, my family and, and closest friends, is that we were predominantly gun hunters, and that's really only a, at that time, was only a nine-day season, um, the week of Thanksgiving. Because um, <clears throat> as a farm kid, uh, I grew up thinking that bow hunting was for people who didn't have enough to do. Um, so it was cool for us to be able to have expanded gun seasons, and I apologize to my bow hunting friends, but that's just the way it was, you know. Uh, so we got these expanded gun seasons. In fact, the big old buck I showed you before, I shot with a rifle on Halloween, which was uh, uh, quite an opportunity. Um, when uh, DNR came out um, with this program called Earn a Buck. There were a lot of folks that didn't like the idea at all um, that you had to shoot a, an antlerless deer before you could could shoot a buck. And you know the, the complaint was, oh my gosh, we're gonna I'm gonna have to pass a big old buck up because I haven't shot a doe yet. Um, yeah, I guess it happened. Um, anecdotally, it happened, but um, we liked it because we were already shooting a lot of does. Um, and uh, we liked it, and uh, we also liked the fact that we got multiple tags. Um, and we had a lot of folks, uh, to this day, I still have a lot of folks come in um, and hunt. So I don't know if I was a bit of a, well, I guess, I don't know if I was. I certainly am a bit of an odd duck in a lot of ways, and I certainly um, was in, in a certain amount of the hunting community that those were things that I supported and was interested in, earn a buck, in fact, we continue to do it even though we don't have it on our farm. You don't, if you shoot a buck on our farm, you, um, uh, you darn well better be shooting a couple of does as well. Um, but we watched, up by us, we watched what was happening with, uh, with CWD in Iowa County and in, in the southern counties. And uh, man, I, I just, I hope and well, they hope they get control of it down there and, and that, you know, that they'll slow it down because you know, certainly the, the couple of things that we have going for us, or at least we thought we had going for us, was time and science. So I'd encourage you to, uh, as you think about all this stuff, to do two things. That's buy time and pay for science. Buying time in our case is to thin our herd down, um, maybe take some of the advice of, of, of folks like Dr. Samuels. Uh, we don't have any antler restrictions or anything like that on our farm anymore. Um, the only rule, we have some rules on our farm. The first one is uh, Doug is the captain. Uh, there are no co-captains, and the captain is always right. Um, so I was the guy who sort of started buck management on our farm, and, and that was we had this kind of fun little thing that we did, and and you uh, had to wear a funny hat if you shot too small of a buck, and, and it was one of those things that we didn't do for everybody. The 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 uh, the folks who were new hunters who hadn't shot a deer for a while and that sort of thing, it was, you know, it was more of a, 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 of a fun uh, sort of reminder that there are some things we're trying to do here. And, um, and we, uh, you know, we continue that, that, that to a certain degree, but um, really the only rule that the captain has now is that any, you can shoot any deer you like, just make sure that it's a good ethical shot. Um, Here's some of the prevalence and detection in four counties, and I know this has been talked about a little bit, but, uh, but I think it's important to look at, you know, quickly. So I'm in uh, northeast Richland County. In fact, oh, actually, our, our 
if we were, if this was the southern part of the county and this was the northern part of the county, our farm is right on the, the back of it is actually the county line. So we're in an area that's, a, you know, 11 to 15 percent um, uh, prevalence. Um, and uh, it, it's really something that we're concerned about and something that, um, you know, you just kind of hold your breath every time you, um, you, you have a deer tested. So those, you know, some of the prevalence. And you can see as you look across there um, in 2018, and um, this is as of a couple of days ago, about half of, uh, uh, of the deer that have been submitted have been tested so far. And again, these are all um, free-ranging deer. Um, so there's our prevalence that's pretty much in these counties. And this is what it looked like. So there we are again. I'm up here when it first started in 2000. And, well, I guess this was 2005. This is the, uh, they called it the eradication zone. And, and I, I think it was a mistake to call it the eradication zone. And I think Tammy talked about that a little bit. You know, words matter. We're going to eradicate. Um, and it, it, there was some outcry from it. So that was then, and this is now, and, and here we are, and actually the star is covering up the, uh, the positives from, from both our farm and, and a couple of neighboring uh, sections up there. That's by section. Um, you know, and I, and I really do want to take a, a second, speaking of the DNR, and Tammy's here, um, to, to thank her and, and our Wisconsin DNR for the work that they've done on this and that they tried to do. Um, and to hear those folks vilified in the way, I mean, you know, I, I've gotten to know Tammy a little bit uh, personally, and I certainly know a bunch of other folks in the DNR. There is nobody in the Wisconsin DNR, and I, I'm going to guess in any Department of Natural Resources anywhere, who is out there trying to kill all the deer and the, these things that you hear, you know, said about them, and they're vilified in such a way, it's just, it, to my mind, it's just wrong. Um, in any event, I just really feel a need to say that. So here's what's happening now. Um, I, I guess we looked at all of these. Well, my pointer doesn't like me, but um, the prevalence trends um, in those in the in the three county area, Iowa County, just being south of uh, of Richland and Sauk. Um, so. You know, and you can just, you know, see that arc and, and uh, you know, we're in, in points where we're at 50%, that coin flip that Brian talked about yesterday. Um, and chronic wasting disease has, you know, for a while kind of took some of the joy out of hunting um, for me because there's this, you know, this concern about it. Um, and so we've worked really hard at, um, you know, trying to do what we can, but then also feeling... A little better about it. This is, uh, and, and I'll tell you a story about kind of each one of these 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 bucks here. And I'm sorry that I have pictures of does, but I guess that's not that interesting. Um, so these are all recent bucks uh, last year and this year from our farm, and there've been a whole bunch more. These are some particular people. Um, this is my nephew. That's the, he's the next generation on our farm. That's my daughter. Um, see that little buck that she shot as about 10 days ago. And uh, it was the first time she shot a deer. Um, so th that's the next generation on our farm. This fella here is a guy who actually leases from us for uh, bow hunting. And, you know, let's go back to that thing about economics. Leasing isn't a, you know, it's not a big deal by us. I mean, they call us the economical uh, Buffalo County, Richland County. Uh, that Richland County is sort of the economical Buffalo County. And, and if you know about, you know, big wild bucks, there are certainly a lot of them in Buffalo County. But we do pretty well there, too. Um, the, w the one in the middle here, Kaylee, that's her first buck. Um, that was this year. Um, and, uh, and she and, uh, and, uh, boy, I'm blanking on her name right now. Um, uh, we'll come back to her, <laughs> actually. She, uh, that was her first buck as well. So these are, I mean, look at the smiles on those faces. Um, you know, I'm happy to report that these four deer that were shot this year all have come back uh, non-positive. Um, that four and a half year old buck there, that's a, um, if you're familiar with the show uh, Meat Eater, um, you might be familiar with Giannis Patelis. This is, and, and they're always talking about the Latvians. This is one of their old Latvian friends. And uh, that guy hadn't shot a buck for like 10 or 12 years and I invited all those guys over and, and uh, he actually shot that deer in self-defense. It was just about to run him over. 
so one of the things for us is uh, that, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's important for us to be able to share um, our hunting tradition and uh, CWD is, you know, threatens that a little bit. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of opened up some other possibilities and not being so obsessed with big bucks and all of that um, has, uh, you know, has resulted in that. So all of the deer in this, in, in this, on this slide, none of them were positive. So let me show you what the ones that are positive look like. Here's our first positives last year. This is a dear friend of mine, um, two and a half year old buck. And uh, these are uh, two college basketball uh, uh, teammates of mine. We hunt together every year. And um, those were the first two positives. And uh, I don't know how many deer we'd shot up to that point. And I help people. And usually I'm wearing, you know, look like a... Uh, cow breeder or a surgeon or something with the long gloves on and everything because that's something we started to do and that day when I shot that deer um, or we shot that deer I should say it was really a group hunt I was out of gloves and so take a look at my hands I just gutted that deer out that's I don't my hands aren't that red when that positive came back folks the first thing I did was looked at my hands knowing full well what I had um, what that I had gutted it without um, gloves. Gotten over a certain amount of that. Um, there's one of our CWD tags. Boy, this pointer really doesn't like me. Um, so, you know, our, our protocol is easy. You can, you, you, you take it in, you, uh, uh, you drop it off, you take it to a facility. They, the, and, and no hunter, I think Tammy mentioned this yesterday, any hunter who wants to get a deer tested can get it tested. Um, and then they can make their decisions from there. So um, I, that's one of the, again, one of the things from the Wisconsin DNR that I, I continue to applaud. Um, so those are two really, they were good, healthy looking deer. I guess the one in the back of the pickup there is a little, looks a little strange the way he's got the legs plugged in. But um, so those are our first two positives. They looked perfectly healthy, beautiful. They were beautiful two and a half year old bucks. This is uh, from a trail camera uh, picture of ours from mid-September. Um, and it's one of those that uh, shoots a, picture up to the phone and my buddy um, sends me the picture. He goes, maybe you want to go out there and see if you can find her. Uh, the picture was a couple of years old or a couple of hours old. I'm so sorry. And uh, went out and we, I mean, we never did, never did find her. And you know, did she have CWD? I, I don't know, but I can tell you what a healthy doe in our uh, area in mid September doesn't look like that. Um, so what CWD also means to us as hunters? Um, really, the testing concerns, um, uh, it, you know, we're doing that. And, you know, again, uh, we have that opportunity to get our deer tested. There is no one who will be denied. And one of the things that we're doing now is to make it a little bit easier. This is actually, um, this dumpster and kiosk is on, um, on our farm. And uh, we have those concerns about field dressing. Um, Proper disposal of carcasses, like the fellow was just talking about. Yeah, I think that's important. Um, you know, waiting for CWD results. Um, I we have the good fortune up there that it's cold, and we're able to uh, we're able to uh, you know sort of hang the deer and, and, and wait. And I have you know facility to be able to do that. Um, but that wondering about you know the future of deer hunting, deciding what to do with CWD positive meat. Um, I'm following the Center for the Disease Control um, recommendations personally. I'm not eating it, and I'm certainly not feeding it to anyone that I, I know. I do know that there are people who've put it up and said, hey, I've got a CWD positive deer. It's already butchered. You want it? And there are people who will say, yep, I'll take it. And, you know, certainly um, that's their, their prerogative. I'm not, I'm not doing it. Um, it's important to note that the governor and the legislature of Wisconsin cut CWD uh, funding. Um, and in an effort to help with some of the efforts, um, some hunters, including myself, adopted testing kiosks like, like this one here and uh, to make testing more convenient and raised funds for carcass dumpsters. And we placed them around the CWD area. Um, on the way over here this morning, I texted a guy and said, yep, uh, or tested the, the, uh, texted the uh, hauler and said the one in uh, Boaz needs to be emptied. Um, and so they're going to bring another one there. We're dropping these uh, liners in there. Those liners are 
and good, good old farm boy technology. Rather than buying specific liners, we're buying six mil silo liners, cutting them into pieces and putting them in there and then we can tackle them right in. Um, it's important, I think, to note that those efforts have more, you know, beyond testing and carcass disposal, I've had a lot of, uh, I'm sorry, I've had a lot of, you know, back of the pickup conversations with folks about CWD and, you know, the possible effects on the deer herd. And, you know, I had one guy, it sounded like Homer Simpson, he said, CWD, is that still around? Um, and then, you know, and then a, a conversation, in, in, you know, comes after that and, and, and we had a really good conversation about it. Um, you know, so some awareness there, and I think that's one of the things to uh, import, uh, to remember. So here's some reactions and uh, comments from those folks that I spoke with, and uh, I guess that's something. The problem with this kind of thing is that you've got to dismiss it then. Um, so just look at some of these things, and, and think about this, if you were hunting in a free-ranging herd, we had five guys shoot four bucks this season, all four tested positive. That's in Iowa County. We love to hunt big bucks, but it's getting harder to justify it why we do it since most of the time there's a good chance no meat comes from it. We dispose of the meat from CWD positive deer, so they're choosing not to eat it. So the only justification we use now is that we're removing diseased animals from the landscape. Um, one, of my, one of the people that I uh, stay in real close contact with, a landowner who actually bought, he has, owns, owns almost 700 acres in the endemic area, we killed 24, uh, 43 deer, 24 of them were tested positive. All the antlered bucks were positive, along with many does and some fawns. And fawns, in the, in the sound in his voice, fawns. Um, different landowner, we've had 7 out of 11 test positive so far. And then there's the guys, well, I'm going to eat it anyway. Um, some fellas who were throwing uh, carcasses into the dumpster, I said, you want, can we cut that head off and test it? And his response was, I don't want to know. Uh, never tested, never will. But he was putting that carcass in the dumpster and saying, hey, you know, thanks for having this dumpster here. This is great that we're not just chucking these things in the ditch somewhere. So, you know, sort of important things. Um, my, my final thoughts are this. There's an initial line and understanding that needs to be established now. And this is one of the things that, that we're working on. And, you know, I don't have to tell you that there are folks out there that are saying that it's not something to be worried about. We had that uh, said in Wisconsin. And guess what? People quit worrying about it for a few years. Um, you're all fantastic people, and it's really interesting to listen to you, but um, you're not necessarily the best at public relations sometimes. I can tell you that with Wisconsin DNR, um, you know, years ago. I think they've improved on it greatly. Um, or producing commercial hunting media. Stakeholders are key. Uh, we really need to make an effort, or you all really need to make an effort to, early on to help stakeholders develop basic understanding of CWD and why it's concerned um, before it becomes critical. Um, as I said, this hunter to hunter, landowner to landowner opportunity, I've done a lot of work in, in forestry and conservation and other areas, and for whatever reason, um, when, when someone talks to a biologist or to a, uh, uh, a DNR forester, sometimes when a landowner is standing there next to them and talking with them about it, that connection uh, between landowner and landowner gives more credibility to someone who should have credibility anywhere. Uh, in Wisconsin, through the uh, Deer uh, Trustee Report, established these CDACs, these County Deer Advisory Commissions, and the DMAPs, and they're examples of agency-sponsored uh, groups, and, and I think they've been, uh, you know, very helpful. I know being slightly involved with, with the hunting media and personalities, I can't, I can't tell you how many people contact me about chronic wasting disease because I've, with Brian, been on a couple of podcasts and then I talk about it from time to time. Thousands of people contact, thousands of people contact me about chronic wasting disease. Um, so, you know, understand that Personalities are going to influence conversation. Um, partner with them wherever you can. And strongly correct misinformation. Um, I'm real uh, grateful that I was able to be here today and, and really want to thank uh, Bob Dittmar and, and, and Nathan for inviting me and, and uh, allowing me to come down and bring my wife along. And, uh, you know, just really grateful for all the work that you guys are doing on this. And, I guess the last thing I want to say is from a, a 
an old sage from Texas, his name is Ray Wiley Hubbard. The days that I keep my gratitude higher than my expectations are really good days. These have been two really good days. So thank you very much.